what up? It's your boy T Bird and Riyashi and today is Russell Wednesday. So about to get some video from I think I think this is Russell LaMia. Yep, Russell LaMia. So I've been trying to do this fit this video in and I got a little bit of time right here. So we're gonna take out ten wrestlers who returned to WWE, but the crowd gave zero Fs. Like I said, the crowds can be very ruthless. Very, very ruthless. Know what I mean? Did we have bizarre moment with rest of, of uh crowds where they cheer the hills and move the faces we have crowds who just savage as fuck and and we got and we got worse crowds who just don't give a fuck it was and it could be a legend at that and still no fucks was the sad i mean crazy about it but sometimes with legend it could be the crowds the younger <coughs> We yeah, younger we around a younger crowd or a crowd that I used to or a certain atmosphere of wrestling as well too, such with like the Indies and all too, like how some of the main roster NXT star going to main roster got um, brought in and some not and goes unfortunately not everybody watch NXT or watch any wrestling as well too. So yeah. Well then that without forward do you want to check out ten wrestling well that's debuts and anything, but we were talking about returns and legends and crazy by sad folk sad sad facts that sometimes a return, you, they, they, so you return and it's no Fs, sadly. Not me, of course, but it's, it's, it's crowds who are ruthless like that. But anyway, what I thought, depends on your lines, of course. Your alignment, of course. But other than that, let's, let's check this video out. One of the most exciting elements of being a wrestling fan is seeing a former WWE wrestler return to the company. Mm -hmm. If this return is known about in advance, then the build in anticipation that shot the boy doing his thing this past Friday and whooping on the bitch line. You know, the bitch line came in, started shit again, raw. But yeah, son, see the AKO will beat the bitch line. I can't wait till Sammy leave the bitch line. Get. He's just uh, stunned into reality and, and leave the bitch line and join up with his boy KO and beat the bitch line, mainly the Busos for the tag, tag team titles. Return should receive a ton of buzz. The subsequent arrival of the returning wrestler should receive a huge reaction. Mm -hmm. If the return is a complete surprise, yes. WWE will usually rely heavily on the surprise mm -hmm. pop as nobody saw the return coming and WWE simply hopes that the fans care enough about the wrestler in question to warrant a positive reaction. But unfortunately, there are those occasions where a former WWE star is returned to the company and receive little to no reaction from the audience. These types of returns aren't common, but when they occur, they are notable for all the wrong reasons. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestlers who have returned to WWE, but nobody cared. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk in a non-wrestling channel. Incredible. Number 10, Chris Masters. Oh, yeah. Now, at one point in time during the ruthless aggression era in WWE, it looked like Chris I'm not gonna lie, he knew he was a heel. His interest, his interest in music was pretty bomb, but he, I but can get really rude from him because he's heel. Masters was on course to be Doom. WWE's next big Doom. thing. Unfortunately, Doom. Masters never met the expectations that WWE placed mm. on him, and this combined with multiple failures of WWE's wellness policy resulted mm. in WWE releasing Masters in 2007. All hope wasn't lost though for Masters, however, as in the summer of 2009, they decided to give the Masterpiece another chance by bringing him back to the company. Masters would make his return at a match against MVP on Raw, but there was just one issue. Nobody cared. Masters received virtually no pop whatsoever, and it was almost as if the crowd had no idea who he was. The Raw commentary team tried their best to present Masters as a big deal, but the crowd reaction simply you, wasn't right. Here's one thing. You got to give props to the, the commentary teams, though. The, they try their best to... They are professionals try their best to make things a big thing, a big thing the way it is or anything. Or even if a botch happened, they correct it and all that. But it's, well, unfortunately, the crowd can't hear the commentaries and, or the TV, and even when you watch the TV, it won't, they sadly won't care. Reflecting the audible praise. Number nine, Tess. Tess. Ooh. In March of 2006, WWE reached an agreement with Tess for Personal a return RIP. to the company after two years away. Their vision for Tess was that he's going to be a part of the revamped ECW mm -hmm. brand. Yep. This was an interesting decision, as whilst Tess certainly had his fans, aka the, oh, the NXT before NXT, <laughs> him back and placing him in the ECW brand was a questionable fit. Yeah. They did the right things in terms of building up Tess's return. Vignettes mm -hmm. would play in advance, so the ECW audience knew he was coming, but sadly, when he eventually returned, nobody in the ECW audience could mm -hmm. give a damn. 
test had put on a ton of muscle, but this he wasn't did. enough to attract he did interest. Contract. The lack of pop test received upon his return was disappointed, but it was a short-sighted decision on behalf of WWE as a former IC champion would have been better suited returning to either Raw or SmackDown. Number 8. Brian, Brian Christopher. Christopher Too Cool was yep. one of the most popular acts of the Attitude Era, but when the group disbanded, all three members of the stable struggled with their respective solo careers. Too Cool member Grandmaster Sex A would have numerous returns, but they would all sadly fall flat. Mm -hmm. The most infamous of these took oh, place in yeah, 2011 yeah. during the road to WrestleMania 27. During the highly criticized feud between Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole, Sex A God. using his real. So much cringe about that damn, that damn feud right there. Uh, it's mainly because of that how they tried it hard to make Michael Cole such a big hill and it was so much so it I mean they I will say they kinda of did a good job but it was just so cringy and annoying man. It was ridiculous. And uh, they, I mean it did his job but that's 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 how good a job did but it still was cringy and uh real name Brian Christopher would take part in a segment on Raw. This was because Christopher was a real life son of Jerry Lawler. So it was R -B it to Brian to Christopher, by the, the way line. But upon his entrance, not a single fan in attendance mm -hmm. reacted to his return. It was as if nobody in attendance remembered just how popular Too Cool were. Probably the blind here and they weren't help either. But the return was misplaced, distasteful, and did a disservice to the late great Brian Christopher. Mm -hmm. Number 7, The British Bulldog. In 1999, yep. WWE made the decision to bring back the British Bulldog back to WWE. A colorful character such as the Bulldog in the Attitude Era was a unique fit to say the least, but WWE did attempt to tweak his presentation. Bulldog would begin to wear jeans and mm -hmm. his theme would eventually be modified to having a contemporary feel. Bulldog made his return in a match against the Big Boss Man on SmackDown and WWE clearly expected Bulldog to receive a thunderous pop. But it was lukewarm yeah, at best. Yeah, it was. I was hyped. I was shocked that he came back, but I was in the crowd. But in the crowd, I'm rewatching it back a while back. That crowd was a little lukewarm, though. But I, I didn't look at it in time. You know, this was like the earliest SmackDown, so who knows? The audience were confused as to why the Bulldog was back, and this was no doubt linked to Bulldog's disastrous oh. WCW run that preceded his return. This run oh. was huge. Prayers up to Marco out. Universally slammed by fans for being a complete waste of time, and Bulldog would even suffer a career altering injury due to WCW's sheer negligence. In relation to his final run, it wasn't much better as Bulldog's in ring work had worsened and fans ultimately struggled to connect with his grittier persona. Number 6, Emma. Oh, uh, yup. Dang, man. They, that was bad. I, they, that, that, I was hyped. I was like, she came back, but they, she barely got any pop, though. That was sucked. Had a relatively decent inaugural run on WWE's main roster, and some fans were deeply sad when she was released in October 2017. She, she Emma was but a great still. in ring talent and seemed to have a good match with anyone in the women's locker room, which was something that all fans seemed to acknowledge. In 2022, Emma would return to the company after five years away. Triple H was the mastermind behind Emma's return, which made sense as Emma was a key part of NXT when Triple H was booking the brand. She would return in a match against Ronda Rousey, but the lack of reaction to her return was a clear indication that fans had forgotten all about her. The SmackDown audience barely reacted, and her return was heavily criticized on social media. Yep. To properly utilize Emma. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough, the thing about being a wrestling Chris, man, you, 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 get, you get a lot of criticism, man. I might have to, 2023 might have be the year I'll start slowly back away from wrestling groups at this point, man. She should have been built up negativity. as a pretend didn't really start work. like one group I'm in, start out with negativity. Um, uh, you, you, if you, the, the job is one, it's not because of the people who runs this, it's the folks who part of the group, not me. As a surprise, as fans were evidently expecting a talent of a bigger stature. Number 5, Jake the Snake oh, Roberts. Yep. The return of Jake the Snake Roberts in 2014 was a huge deal. Roberts had finally defeated his personal demons and as a result, WWE were allowing Roberts to be a part of the WWE family once again. Roberts' return would come at the mm. old school Raw event and he would mm. even make his return just as The Shield were about to triple powerbomb yeah. CM Punk. Yep. Upon Roberts' music hitting, The Shield looked stunned but the audience were eerily quiet. The only time the audience remotely reacted was when Roberts placed his trademark snake onto the body of Dean Ambrose. Mm -hmm. It was a massive shame and a huge disservice to someone that deserved a ton of recognition right. and respect. Number 4, The Great Carly. Oh. I can kind of see this happen. They don't, they, well, they barely gave a fuck about him when he was wrestling. I mean, 
when he was here, of course, he get the boob and he did the, the love thing. It was like, that's the only thing I almost pop other than that. They really didn't care about him. Ring work was I'll an exact like Stella. During his first WWE run, he did often receive great ovations from the crowd. However, upon his random one-off return in WWE in 2017, yeah. fans were completely over Kali's persona and had no desire to see him anywhere near a WWE ring. Kali would return at the Battleground pay-per-view, helping Jinder Mahal retain his WWE title in a Punjabi prison match against Randy. Another thing part about it, nobody really cared about that. No, his people was not really feeling Jinder Mahal's uh title run whether he was face fans it definitely was face fans us face fans was definitely not feeling it but the hill fans barely unless you really unless you was a serious hill fan they ain't really like that uh title run anyway the orton mm -hmm. the return was as confusing as carly didn't even come out to his own theme song yeah that's Instead the other thing too to mahal's theme yep. now in his defense if he actually came out to his trademark theme then the reaction may have been more positive Number three, Big, big boss, boss Man. man. Oh, yeah. One of the standout talents in WWE throughout the 90s was the Big Boss Man. Boss Man was known for being one of the best big men in the business, and some fans will argue that the Boss Man is one of the greatest talents to never win a WWE title. That's fast. Unfortunately, his return in 2001 fell completely flat. Mm. It's a debate as to whether this was due to crowds simply not caring, or WWE presenting him Ec in a wrong manner. Right. Boss Man would return in a high-profile way as he would attack Stone Cold Steve Austin, aligning with Booker T in the process. Whilst the idea of Bossman working with two main eventers was fantastic, the execution was poor, as Bossman and Booker had little chemistry, so it just felt disjointed as a result. This would end up being the Hall of Famer's final WWE mm -hmm. run, but it didn't take away from his contributions to the world of pro wrestling, and his work continues to be celebrated to this very day. Number 2. Sid I'm so pissed at folks. I was so kind of disappointed that folks, the folks didn't get, he didn't get the pop it was, because... I literally popped at. I was at my friend's, my uh friend, my girlfriend's time, uh, ex of my uh house when I did it, and she was like, "What's wrong with me?" and anything. I was, I was hyped to sit, but I was, but the crowd wasn't really into. I was so mad about that. Mm, I was so the disappointed. The twelve return that. of Psycho Sid to WWE was a return that nobody saw coming. Mm -hmm. Sid would return to Raw to challenge Heath Slater during Slater's feud with the Legends yep. of Raw from the past. Despite WWE nailing the presentation and using Sid's iconic theme song. The crowd just didn't care. Right. It was apparent they didn't even know who he was. Fans on social media at the time were furious at the lack of respect the crowd showed for a former right. WWE champion. I would too. Just a different time period. Who's the man? Since 1997. Right. Although the crowd response was lackluster, it was great to see Sid back at the WWE. All right, I was hyped. Since his 2012 appearance, fans have been campaigning to get Sid inducted into the WWE oh. Hall of Fame. Oh, that'd be he. He should be, should be um, inducted this year. That'd be dope. Want to call? And number one, Christian. Christian. Oh, well, the buzz yeah. around in Christian's inevitable 2009 return was unbelievable. Initial plans called for Christian to be revealed as the one behind the mysterious attacks on Jeff Hardy. When those creative plans leaked online, Vince McMahon outright cancelled them. Oh. McMahon then opted for Plan B for Christian, which was a lackluster return on WWBC mm -hmm. show ECW. Mm -hmm. This was a complete waste of Christian's talents, and McMahon without question made the wrong call. He would return in a random spot on the show, interrupting but, the ECW. But he uh, redeemed himself later on. Though. W Champion Jack Swagger, and due to the fans in attendance being half asleep, Christian barely got a pop. To make things worse, Todd Grisham on commentary received extensive criticism for his underwhelming call of the return. Grisham would just simply declare, it's, it's Christian! It was in the most monotone manner. It's all some respect for it. And I know he's I know he's an asshole right now at AEW, but this final time he came back to the face, show some respect for the, for the man though. Come on. And a possible, it was a total disappointment. <sighs> But they have it folks, 10 wrestlers who returned to WWE, but nobody cared. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content. Cool. Alright. Oof. I had to hit the, 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 uh, what's the name? But anyway, this was cool. This was a good video right here. I like this. There's 10 wrestlers who made a debut earlier than they did. Oh, I might go check that out. I think I said this before. I'm not sure. But anyway, I might check it out. But anyway... This was a good interesting video to check out. It was. Um, but other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Bird signing off. One love.